Hi guys, welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. I have to put out this video, it's so important because I am a part of the generation that talks about we gone, we finna break all generational curses, okay? That ain't staying in our bloodline, no, 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 no. So I'm a part of the generation that is like, we finna break everything. We breaking all those curses off this line, okay? Ain't no more connection. <laughs> so you guys, the Lord has been talking to me about something because this is a, a general theme that's going around today. And it's important to look within your life and see things and patterns and signs and stuff that are just really continuing a negative cycle in your life. God talked to me about how um, he said to me, in order for you to know how to break a generational curse, you have to know what habits and patterns formed the generational curse in the first place and you have to resist those things so that you can see a brighter day a newer day okay so i want to talk to you guys about breaking generational curses and how to effectively do so okay right and uh, maybe more will come after that so if this is anything that you're interested in watching then all you need to do is stick around Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with a friend, okay? Without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. Okay, so you guys, the Lord's been talking to me about breaking generational curses and what generational curses are, la di da di da You guys, generational curses, any kind of curse, okay? Want me to tell you where curses come from? They do not come from the devil, people. No. I think we love to believe, oh, the devil can curse me. No, 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 no. When you break God's laws, you are automatically entering or giving, putting yourself in the, the red light, so to speak, the red zone, to be automatically faced with curses, all right? Curses actually come from God. Yeah, the blesser also has the right to curse. <laughs> what do you know? And we always think, oh, it's the devil that cursed me. Scripture tells us that God actually is the one who put a curse on people when they do certain things. Balaam. Okay, and the Lord's been talking to me a lot about false prophets. You guys, look out for them. Um, they're coming. They're coming. Like, they're everywhere now. Like, they're, and they're in the church. They're in the church. They're in the church. Okay? Um, so, like, Balaam tried to curse the children of God. He couldn't because they were a blessed people. <laughs> what? He could have cursed them. Except they would have break, broken the laws of God. That's how a generational curse comes in upon you. Okay? And then, then it passed down. And we see this in David's life, right, with Absalom and what he did with Bathsheba. The Lord was like, okay, since you did this evil thing, this is what's going to happen. This is a curse, right? So curses didn't, doesn't come from the devil, people. It comes from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let that sit. Let that sit and sink in. So the Lord was saying to me, do you know what causes curses? And I began to listen and he was like, habits. <laughs> Bad habits. Habits that are not from me, okay? Habits that you've learned in Egypt. Habits that you've learned from your friend, from your neighbor, who is ungodly, all right? Habits, bad things. I didn't teach you that, man. I didn't teach you that. Where'd you learn that, right? Habits form patterns and patterns form curses, okay? It's a bend, okay? It's a bend in the trend of godliness. That's what causes curses, okay? So a pattern is actually now, you know, a, a, a design. It's like you are now working in this design because of your because of your habits. It's now become a pattern. And now, of course, that's a nice cycle that you and your all your generations have to go through until somebody begins to do the right thing again. Okay? Now, to make me understand what, you know, about this, what he wanted me to share today on this video, he took me into the Old Testament in the book of 2 Kings, I believe, or 1 Kings. You guys, let me get my Bible. Hold on. Now, I know I already mentioned the story of um, David and how, you know, in his bloodline, you know, you know, this thing happened, right? Absalom then slept with all of the concubines on the rooftop and all these crazy things that we would not want to happen in our lives, right? So the Lord was talking to me about how, the, you know, the curses form. That's how they form, through you going your own way. You're going astray. God didn't say to do that, but you did it, right? And, of course, there's repentance for us in the, under the new covenant with, of Christ, which is, you know, grace. It's not for us to abuse it, but it is for us to be wise enough to know righteousness from wickedness and avoid it, okay, at all costs. So patterns form curses, and the Lord took me to... 
you know, what continues the curse, right? He was showing me, you know, what will continue the curse? Let me take you to my word. So he took me into Second Kings, in the book of Second Kings, and um, the real, he was showing me the pattern, okay? So, you know, in Second Kings or in the book of Kings, it's when, you know, kings started to rule Israel and Judah, right? And uh, these kingdoms were being um, led by, okay, uh, hold on, let me give you like, for an example, some of the names, right, of, of the kings that ruled uh, in the land of um, Israel and Judah, right? So after Athalia and Jehu and all those people, they had King Hezekiah, and then they had King Hezekiah's son, all right? Um, Amaziah, and their names are, you guys, their names are like, oh my gosh, I'm getting so confused, man. Everybody's names sound the same, right? So their sons would succeed them. And depending on whether they follow the ways of the Lord or they choose to do their own way, a curse or a blessing would follow them. Are you catching on? Are you catching on? Are you, are you catching on to the video, you guys? I don't know why. Their sons would succeed them, and depending on uh, what the sons did, God would, uh, you know, would say, oh, um, the Lord was with him because he kept all of the laws of the Lord, the decrees of the Lord, the commands of the Lord. So I'll read a little piece for you so that you get an understanding of what I'm saying, okay? All right, so where is it, Lord? Take me there, please, and thank you. In the third year of the reign of Hosea, son of Elah, as king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, became king of Judah at the age of 25, okay? And he ruled in Jerusalem for 29 years. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah, or Z yeah, Zechariah, following the, ex listen to this, listen, you guys, verse 3 of 2 Kings chapter 18 says, following the example of his ancestor, King David, he did what was pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He destroyed the pagan places of worship. Think about it in your bloodline, in your story, in your situation. He destroyed the places of pagan worship, broke the stone pillars, and cut down the images of the goddess Asherah. And he also broke into pieces the bronze snake, okay, that, that time, Moses people, had. You guys, let me get the real pronunciation. All right, so... Up to that time, the people of Israel had burnt incense in its honor. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. Judah never had another king like him either before or after this time. He was faithful to the Lord and never disobeyed him, but carefully kept all the commands that the Lord had given Moses. So the Lord was with him and he was successful in everything that he did. You guys, are you listening? He rebelled against the emperor of Assyria and refused to submit to him. All right? So you are refusing to submit to the devil. Okay? You, this is a new life. This is a new strategy. So God is saying, uh, if you want to break the generational curses in your life, you're going to have to look at the patterns. Yeah. This means call up the people. Talk to them. Watch your bloodline. Look and see what and what they did, what and what they did not do. And you don't do that. You trust in the Lord. You keep his decrees his commandments what he's asking of you and live by the spirit people okay and this is how you are going to effectively break a curse because you're no longer walking in the habit that formed the pattern that introduced the curse got it all right you guys please read in second kings um read yeah from second kings um especially since the death of um ahab and jezebel mm -hmm. Start reading from there and you will see what I'm talking about in this scripture, okay? What I'm talking about in this video about how to effectively break generational curses off your family, okay? Now, those after you, like your children, your children's children, they have to, as well, in order to, to walk in the blessings of God, they have to be doing what is pleasing to God, okay? Yeah. So if your parents effectively broke a curse and they want to continue that blessing, they have to continue in the obedience that formed the blessing in the first place. Do you get it? Okay. So you guys, I know that this video is for many of us that are watching. Okay. Men, I include myself. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to effectively break a curse, you have to know what habits formed the patterns and what patterns gave birth to the curses and avoid it at all costs. Okay. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Feel free to share this video with a friend and or a family member. Okay. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you guys for watching. I love you and God loves you best.
until my next video. Bye.